Welcome to the Existential Empath Podcast. My name is Tanya and I am an intuitive empath. My intention is to share valuable tips, tools, and techniques that I have learned so you can tap into your own inner healer naturally and intuitively. Welcome back, everyone. I hope that you are all doing well. Today, I wanted to discuss detachment and the overwhelming sense of freedom that you can feel when you learn how to detach. And this can go hand in hand when you are quantum leaping or timeline shifting. And so I have been practicing this a lot uh, over the past several years and learning how to disconnect when things feel out of alignment or feel out of control or even chaotic for that matter. And so, you know, how do we move to a greater level of consciousness? And a lot of it is simply by not reacting to our environment, but sitting in a space of um, uh, self-reflectiveness, pausing, allowing our nervous system to self-regulate, And, uh, you know, just really waiting for those um, chemicals in our body to just simmer down and to relax. And so if you feel like you're on the go all the time and you just feel like you can't turn things off, then you may want to practice the art of detachment. And this is where you can really find yourself Uh, you know, finding your own alignment and really witnessing where you're out of alignment in your life. And so recently I have detached myself from social media and electronics. My uh, iPhone actually kicked the bucket and (laughs) it was time for me to get a new one. And I decided I'm going to hold off on this for a little bit and just see what it feels like to not uh, be attached to my cell phone, to not be attached to social, social media. And I've got to say, it has been liberating. <laughs> it has been so freeing to not have to be connected to that all the time. And it feels really nice to not have to be um, attached to anything, you know, in that reality or in the that timeline. And so I'm sure there'll come a point when I decide to, uh, you know, reattach to that, (laughs) to one of those or both, or maybe not. I don't know. We'll see how that all plays itself out. But, you know, this is how we can expand and grow our consciousness. And really what it does is when we aren't being distracted by external sources, we are kind of forced to go within. We're kind of forced to look internally into what is, um, you know, bringing things to the surface. What are things that we need to heal? Uh, you know, what are some, who are some people in our lives that maybe we don't feel a positive connection with, or maybe we need to detach from certain energies around us. And that could be people, places, or things. And uh, so when we learn the art of detachment, it really allows us to tap into that flow, flowing state of the universe. And I've recognized this many times in my life when, uh, you know, those times when you feel like you're on a hamster wheel and you're just running and running and running in the same direction and nothing seems to be changing that's when you want to practice the art of detachment because really what you're doing is you're pulling yourself out of that timeline or out of that reality to allow yourself to self-regulate and allow your nervous system to calm down. And when you allow your nervous system to calm down, you can see things more clearly. You, uh, your breath starts to slow down and uh, your mind starts to slow down and you can really see things from a greater vantage point when you learn how to detach. So, you know, detachment is really just experiencing our feelings without allowing them to control us. And, you know, when we are on that hamster wheel or we feel like our lives are just spiraling out of control, this is when we want to practice Uh, detachment. And detachment isn't avoidance because what happens is when you detach, you will actually start to feel the emotions within your body. So you're not avoiding, you're actually going to be moving and processing those emotions. And uh, sometimes just the distractions of whether it's, um, you know, what's going on at work or the people around you or what's going on in the world, just really disconnecting from that for a little bit will allow you that that space 
And uh, when we create space within our energetic system, it allows for new uh, things to, to move in and it allows you to control what's moving into your space. So, you know, when we detach, we really aren't avoiding. We are just uh, allowing ourselves more space, more space to heal, more space to grow, more space to take the next step in our lives, more space to see things more clearly. So uh, we know which direction or which path to take. And so, um, you know, when we take a step back, we can look at things a little bit more objectively when we detach and we can let things go. And it's important for us to accept the things that we cannot change. And oftentimes when we are attached, we have an energetic cord to a person, place or a thing. And that will kind of siphon us a little bit. It pulls away from our worthiness. It pulls away from our own sense of self-support and because we're relying on something outside of ourselves. And when we detach, it really does allow us to tap into our confidence and our inner being and our inner knowing and our intuition. And when we are attached to others or attached to things outside of us, then it can create a distraction in you know, who we are. It can actually create a distraction from our own subtle voice within ourselves telling us where we should go or what we should do because we are tuning in to what's going on outside of us. And so just that um, simple act of detachment can allow us to uh, feel within our bodies and to sense things more clearly within our own intuition. And you know how it feels when you go out on a hike or, you, you know, you go spend the day alone. Uh, maybe you go to the lake and kind of sit there and just relax. You know how, you know, those thoughts will start, you know, kind of coming to the surface this, at first, but by the time you're done, you feel a lot better. You feel a lot clearer. And really what you're doing is you're practicing the art of detachment when you're doing that. And so it's important to do this every now and then. It's it's kind of like an energetic detox, really, you know, like shutting off social media, shutting off your cell phone, you know, shutting off your computer as much as you can. I mean, if you work in a job where you're constantly go, 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 you know, just sit back and take a look at ways that you can detach that are uh, reasonable for you and, uh, you know, do it the best way that you can and don't beat yourself up about it. Just, uh, you know, just allow yourself that that time, that that solitude, that alone time. And each and every one of us needs that. Some of us need it more than others. I know me, I'm 95% alone. I love it. I love my alone time. And uh, I know I have uh, people in my life that have a hard time with that. They have a hard time that I love my alone time and they take it personally, but really it's not personal. It's really just me. This is how I function. This is how I am. I'm an you know, introverted extrovert. When I'm doing my 5% extrovertedness, um, that's that's me. But when I've got my 95% introvertedness, that's me too. And uh, I'm just very, very comfortable in my own energy and in my own space. And it's taken me many years to get to this point. There was a time when I wasn't comfortable, you know, in my own energy. And now I just don't know what I would do without it. I just love it so much. And so, you know, just take a look at where you are, you know, on the scale, you know, are you an introverted extrovert like me, I'm probably more introverted now than I ever have been. I, I would look back at my 20s and say I was probably the flip. I was probably 95% extroverted <laughs> and 5% introverted. But I think as I've gotten older, I've really seen the value and the worthiness for my own self-regulation when it comes to being introverted. I feel that. And, you know, there's times when I feel the need to connect and times when I don't. And, uh, you know, it's really important to set boundaries when you are uh, in these spaces because not everyone can handle that introverted side. Not everyone can understand, you know, why do you like to spend 95% of your time alone? I mean, doesn't that sound lonely? And to me, it's like, no, it's rejuvenating. It's healing. I love every minute of it. And But then there's times when I'm like, okay, I feel like it's time for me to to connect with others. And so it really just takes that um, balance, but I've really tuned into my intuition as well to have a deeper understanding as to, you know, why I like spending that time alone. I like to, to um, listen to music. I like to read. I like to learn. I like to uh, write. I, you know, I like to, to take walks and uh, listen to the nature. And oftentimes when you're with someone else, it's, it's distracting, you know, and it, it, it kind of takes away from you tuning in to uh, all of your senses and what's around you. So, you know, listen to your own internal guidance and see where you're at when it comes to um, 
spending time alone and spending time with others. And, you know, we need to learn too to detach from others' choices, you know, knowing that they're on their own spiritual path and allowing, you know, that sense of release. Okay. So, you know, I give permission for them to release me. And I also give myself permission to release them and, you know, asking people to release you because when we hold on to people, it makes it really difficult for us to walk our path, right? Because maybe their path is different than ours. And it's important for us to tune into that and get a deeper sense of, does this feel in alignment to me? Am I following someone else's path? Or am I actually listening to my own inner, inner guidance system and following my own path? And, you know, this has been a learning process for me because, uh, like I said, I, I would connect with others and then I would find myself following their path and it was pulling me away from what I was really truly meant to be doing. And so I feel like this year I've really been anchored and grounded into my own path. And, you know, that may hurt other people's feelings because I'm not as uh, communicative with with my friends and family around me, or maybe I'm not um, as... Uh, easygoing as I used to be, but that's because I was oftentimes following someone else's path or following someone else's belief system. And I got to a point where I had to kind of take a step back and say, Tanya, what, what do you believe? You know, what is your belief system? And uh, unfortunately, that can be a lot different than the people around you. And but then it can be the same, too. It really just just depends. And, you know, my belief systems change regularly based off of what I'm learning, how I'm expanding my consciousness. And so it's really just this ebb and flow and it's finding that ebb and flow within your life. And um, and I think detachment is the beginning of that. Just learning how to detach and be in your own energy will allow you to tune into your own intuition and your own belief systems and it'll allow you to heal and move through that and uh, to do some of that shadow work, you know, that is very important. And it's a lot better to do that shadow work alone because you can move through it uh, faster. And if you do need to reach out to, to someone, then do that, you know, and if you have to set boundaries and say, hey, I need to spend some time alone and I don't know how long it's going to be, then do that. And the people around you who value you and, you know, will listen to you and they will honor that and they will respect that. And if they don't, then maybe they aren't meant to be in your life, you know, or at least at this time. And so, you know, when we choose how we react to others or, or, or we choose how we respond to others versus reacting, then it allows us to learn how to detach as well. And so we can step away from things that may be harmful to us, uh, harmful energies, of others or harmful foods, maybe harmful cravings, har harmful addictions, alcohol, drugs, whatever it may be, you know, whatever that crutch is or whatever that attachment is. When we learn how to detach from it, it allows us to open up that space and to uh, see the energy from a more objective standpoint. And uh, then we can move through it and we can kind of see it from a third party. And, um, you know, really detachment allows us to take a deep breath. <laughs> it's really what it does. And it um, allows us to have a little bit more patience in our lives. And so, you know, we can kind of listen to ourselves without losing ourselves, losing ourselves in others, losing ourselves in our work, losing ourselves in the state of the world, whatever it may be, wherever you may be losing yourselves. Maybe you're a kite in the wind, a kite in a hurricane, <laughs> and you're just flapping around all over the place and you don't, feel grounded. You don't feel like, I don't even know what my energy is. Start practicing the law of detachment. It'll definitely help you. And uh, it's really helped me almost to the point where it becomes um, a part of my routine. It's like, okay, I've got to physically detox and now I'm going to energetically detox. And it just helps me with grounding is really what it does. And it it uh, allows us to be in the world, but not of the world, right? And so it kind of just frees us to live our life with more ease, more harmony, more balance, and uh, more grace, really. And so, you know, what are some things that we might want to detach from? We might want to detach from negativity. 
Um, we could detach from distractions in our life, whatever those look like. We could detach from overthinking. That's a big one. You know, when we're overthinking things, it can be really difficult. And so, you know, trying to separate ourselves from that a little bit could be helpful. We might want to detach from an outcome. You know, maybe there's something in your life that you are trying to attract and it's just not coming. Then detach from it for a little bit. Go do something else and uh, see if it'll attract to you. And I've had that happen to me in the past. It's like, I've been so focused on something and it's not coming, it's not coming. And then boom, I go out and I take a walk or I go spend the day um, doing something else. And then boom, I come back and it's right there. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, that's all it took. <laughs> it just took a little bit of detachment. And so, you know, you definitely want to detach from clinging on to things. When we cling on to things, we create resistance and we create this, um, this hold onto things. And, um, you know, there could be this sense of codependency or, um, just that, that clinginess. I mean, you guys all know how it feels when someone is being a stage five clinger. I mean, that's no fun, right? It, you're just like, Oh gosh, I just want them to give me some space. I feel suffocated. I can't breathe. And, uh, that's no fun. So if you're on the other side of that, being the cling, the clinger, <laughs> then think about how it feels to be on the other side. It's just, it's not fun. So release it, let it go. Um, you know, it's kind of like that tug of war, just let it go. Right. And, and allow yourself that space because when you let it all go, you expand your power and you can align, uh, you know, with a new experience and it allows uh, flow to come in your life that may not have been there before. And so, you know, just really, moving yourself through that will allow you to um, open yourself up to new energies. And so, you know, and also too, when you let things go, it allows you to expand more too. And I noticed that it's like when you're working on quantum leaping or timeline shifting, um, if you're holding on to things, you know, from an old perspective, then you're still holding on to an old timeline. So detaching yourself from those things, uh, you know, my, old phone kicked the bucket and I'm really considering changing my phone number because uh, I'm still holding on to an old timeline, you know, when I lived in Florida. And so uh, it's time for me to make a change, to make a difference in my energetic uh, blueprint. And so I'm really considering that. And these are just little things that we can do. It doesn't have to be these grandiose things. You can do these small things to, to detach and you don't have to stay detached forever unless you want to, you know, I mean, maybe you detach, from a person or a place and then you move through a healing process and then you decide, wow, this isn't really what I want. And so you decide to just completely cut the cord, you know, right there, then and there, and that's okay. You know, give yourself permission to do that. Or you detach and then you realize, wow, I really miss this person or I miss this location that I used to live. And I think I want to go back there. I think I want to reestablish that connection then give yourself permission to do that. So it's really based off of your choice and how you decide, you know, to, uh, to detach and to reattach. And so it's really just learning that art of uh, disconnecting to reconnect. And how do you want to reconnect and what does that look like to you? And it may look differently to each and every one of us. Uh, you know, things that I detach from, you may think are completely irrational or, Ill you know, unreasonable <laughs> and vice versa. I could feel the same about things that you may detach from. And so it really just um, is based off of you and, and your choices and your energy. So I hope that this um, information was helpful to you. I know I'm navigating these waters of detachment as well and just learning that um, it's not always easy, you know, but sometimes it's needed. Sometimes it's really needed to, uh, to, you know, balance yourself out, to re-regulate your nervous system and to give yourself a nice reset. You know, I think of, I think it's an Office Max commercial where they have a big red button. It looks like a reset button. <laughs> Sometimes we need to hit that big red button <laughs> and we need to reset ourselves. And uh, you might be surprised at, you know, what that reset looks like because it may look a lot different than where you are now before you start learning the act of detachment. So uh, I hope you're all doing well and I send you all so much uplifting energy and uh, peace. Take care. You deserve to navigate your life in alignment with health, happiness, and abundance. To learn more about the services that I provide, 
including Beyond Quantum Healing Hypnosis, EFT Tapping, and The Emotion Code, visit my website at www.TheExistentialEmpath.com. Thank you.